Hello everybody, this is Charlotte from the Huffington Post and I'm here today to interview the one and only Vladimir Lenin. I'm super excited, so let's get going. Alright, Vladimir Lenin, Hello. Charlotte of the Huffington Post. Oh, it's a Charlie. You're a woman. I am a woman. Hmm, that would be a man. Well, uh, it's just me. Oh, alright then. You'll, you'll be good enough. Thank you. Um, you know, you're one of the more powerful men in the world at this point, aren't you? I am. Yes, you're considered to be a powerful leader. Yes. So, why don't you tell me about the people who don't find you to be a worthy leader? People like, say, the Tsarists. Why are people still following the Tsar? That's my biggest question. He's a terrible leader. He's arrogant and greedy and self-centered. And his views are severely flawed. It just makes no sense, his ruling, or why anyone would live in the past with him. I mean, in the future, which is communism. Because communism is the best. I see. So you think that people who still believe in the Tsar and having a Tsar are just outdated? Yeah. Do you think the entire concept is outdated? More or less. Okay. Interesting. Um, speaking of the past, World War I. Ugh. It's a perfect example of how Nicholas just failed Russia as a whole country. He would have broken backs just to get his wealth and pride back. We had no need to be in that war. So if it were up to you, Russia would never have even entered World War One. No, we had no place. I see. That's an interesting point of view. Um, do you think that you guys had any place in the March Revolution? I mean, they did elect a provisional government. Did that sting a little? Every person needs to make a stupid decision before they find the right one, I find. It was a step in the right direction from Nicholas. But sooner or later, they would have run the government into the ground. So, you say they would have run the government into the ground. So, are you then saying that you were doing them a favor during the November Revolution by taking them over? I wouldn't say taking them over, more just helping them. Helping them? Yes. Forcibly? Yes. Okay, so... Your thoughts on the November Revolution, just... When people actually began listening, we were given people the opportunity to become equals in no matter what money state they were in. Okay, so you did the, you did the country a favor. Yes. That's, it. That's very interesting. Um, what about the Civil War? Was that a favor for the country? It's all about social class. That's what always causes Civil Wars, no matter where it is. I mean, every country who has a social class is going to eventually have a civil war problem on their hands. So why not switch to communism? I see. It's very interesting there, Lenin. Yes. Um, so you think civil wars are inevitable? Do yes. you encourage the civil wars? Uh, not necessarily. But you think they have value? If you could learn from them. Learning from them being... Go communist. I see. I see. I understand. Um, speaking of communism, what do you think about war communism? It's extremely necessary. Hmm. Because if you're in a communist country, you won't need to go to war because all your needs are already met. Ah. So there's no reason to fight. But in times of war in countries that are not already communist, do you think well, communism is inevitable? Yeah. Well, people can rely on the fact that if they're poor, they're not going to be shoved to the front line. I see. So it's about equality and the chance to survive. Exactly. Quite In smart for a lady. I like to think I am smart for my gender. Um, anyways, the national economic policy kind of ties in with, you know, war communism a little. I guess. Do you want to expand on it? Eh. At first we wanted to move slowly into it, giving people the time to adjust, you know? Change is always hard for some people, but the war sped things up drastically. So we had to take control of the peasants in production to make sure everyone got equal food, because no one wants to starve. No, no one does want to yeah. starve. Do you think that without your national economic policy people would have starved? Yeah, it would become survival of the fittest, which is communist stops that. I see. Very interesting thoughts here. Does, um... I've heard you're friends with a man by the name of Trotsky. Does he share those opinions? Oh, my man does. He's a strong military leader and a great asset to communism. He just draws the people in with his enthusiasm. 
Would you consider him to be an inspirational figure then? Definitely, next to me. He's second best. I see. That's very interesting. Yes. So, he's a good rallier then? Yes. He boosts people's morale. Yes. Interesting. So, um, does Stalin also boost morale? Stalin doesn't deserve to be part of the government. Really? He's a communist, but he's so self-centered and greedy, he's only getting the communist government for the money, which is a total idea against communism. Maybe I Trotsky see. He actually drew a picture of him. He drew a picture of Stalin. Oh. That says that Sol Stalin stinks. He does. Is that supposed to be literal, or...? Oh, in every way, in every way you can think of, my dear. So you're very against Stalin, then? Yeah. Why is he so prominent in your government, then, if you're so against him? Eh, uh, you don't really, him, you know, Trotsky, you know, he's gonna take over if I ever die, which will, you know, not happen. Really? I'd heard you were kind of sick, actually. <clears throat> Who told you that? Um, it's just been going around, you know, some people are saying you're a little... You've been a little ill these last few years. Well, don't believe them. I'm not ill. So I meet new people, you know? People do get sick sometimes. It's not like it's my fault. And, what? Well, just, just carry on. Okay, um... Okay, well, you know, interesting views on Stalin there. Um, I was surprised. Hmm. But, um, tell me about Communist International. Oh, it's my baby. You know, my brainchild. Ugh, it, when I die, it will be my legacy. It's the formula for the perfect world. Who could not love it? So it says in Communist International, your goal is basically to just bring communism everywhere. Yes. And you think that will bring the world peace? Yeah, world peace. Now you said it will be your legacy after you die. Yes. Just to reiterate, are you at all sick? I am not sick. Okay. Okay, um... That contradicts with some reports I've been... Well, don't listen to everything you've heard. Only listen to me. Okay. Well, um, it's been really nice chatting with you. Yes. Um, and I guess... It was your pleasure. It was my pleasure. Um, I'll be leaving you now. All right. This is Charlotte of the Huffington Post, signing out.